stay tuned for all the excitement of the world champion Cincinnati Reds. Hey, everybody, do the Cincinnati Shuffle to your radio. Because the Reds are coming up, they're getting ready to go. Take off your shoes and relax, enjoy the big red machine. Rooting for the hometown champion team. The Reds are coming up, they're getting ready to go. So do the Cincinnati Shuffle to your radio. bench. Tremendous night. Two-run homer in the fourth, a three-run homer in the ninth. There he is, a franchise. Cincinnati 7, New York 2, bottom of the ninth, game four. Velez is out on strikes and curveball. McEnany gets his first strikeout. One out, and it brings up Mickey Rivers. Still trying to hit it past Rose. Needless to say, Rose is right on his doorstep as we look at the Cincinnati dugout. That boy is ready for the victory celebration. Right to Pete Rose. He got him. The one ball he hit hard, and Pete Rose was there. Mickey Rose, Mickey Rivers, finally lines one at Rose, and what do you think, Bill? Oh, caught it. Right there. Two balls, no strikes. Two out, seven to two, bottom of the ninth. Cincinnati leading. This could be it, left field. George Foster, Geronimo Foster makes the catch. That's it. The Cincinnati Reds win the World Series in four straight. It was a sweep. The final score, Cincinnati 7, the New York Yankees 2. So the Cincinnati Reds are out away from sweeping the 1976 World Series. Two outs. Here's a 2-0 pitch to Roy White. Swung on. High fly ball to left center field. That should do it. Foster has it. And the 1976 World Championship belongs to the Reds. The Reds have swept Billy Martin's Yankees decisively by a 7-2 score in the final game as the Reds become the first National League team since the 1921-1922 Giants to win back-to-back -back World Series. By the time George Foster had caught the final fly ball of the 1976 World Series, one word represented the world champion Reds, pride. They carried pride along with their luggage to spring training. That pride drove them to become the first National League team in 54 years to win back-to-back -back World Series. The Reds' brand of pride resulted in their fifth Western Division title in seven years. But that was only step one of their three-step goal. Team captain Pete Rose noted the tremendous collection of talent on hand as the season opened. If everybody just does what they're capable of doing, and not, nothing spectacular, just let Bench knock in his 100 runs and hit 25 home runs, and Perez the same, and let Morgan steal his 65 bases, and let me get my 200 hits, and let Davey hit 280, and, and Caesar and those fellas, and we'll win a lot of ball games. But there again, the name of the game is pitching, and, and we got some good pitchers and some good re relief pitching, probably the best relief pitching in the league, and you know, and our defense is spectacular too, and I think that's what wins a lot of games for us is our defense, and I see no reason why we should have any mental lapses in defense in 1976. But none of Sparky Anderson's Reds would settle for anything less than his best. Hidden under the famous C on each uniform was a constant companion of each man, pride. The proud Reds previewed an explosive offensive season on April 8th. In front of 52,949 opening day fans, Tony Perez led the Reds to a 15-hit, 11-5 conquest of Houston. 
It's a four to one ball game. The Reds over the Astros. Cincinnati trying to get some more with second and third occupied and one out. The strike two pitch. Perez line drive, base hit down the left field line. In the score is Griffin. Here comes Joe Morgan. Tony heading towards second base, a two run double and it's six to one our side. The Reds' regular season barrage ended six months later with 102 victories. Club records for RBIs, runs, and hits. Their best team batting average since 1930. And an average of 5.3 runs per game. They sent baseball researchers digging back to 1914 to find a Reds team that stole more bases than their 210. Number 14, the third base, Pete Rose. Rose. At age 35, Pete Rose pounded out 34 hits in his finest April ever. By mid-September, Rose had notched his 200th hit for the eighth season. Only Ty Cobb had more. Here's a chopper along the first baseline, running over to pick it up his bar, throwing, and did he get him? No, he didn't. The ball is dropped by the first baseman, Thomason, and they scored out a base hit. As Jim Barr fell down at the first base foul line, fielding the ball, and the crowd comes to its feet in a standing ovation for Pete Rose as he has just come up with his 200th hit of the season. Rose became the first player in league history to lead in runs and doubles for three straight years. Pete Rose with a runner at second, one out. Rose has walked and hit hard back to the mound. He swings, hits a fly ball to right center field. Going back, Jimmy Wynn can't get it. Here comes Glenn, he'll score. Rose is going to second with his 42nd double of the year, and it's three to nothing. Only 238 more hits, and Rose will have 3,000. He's 28th on the all-time hit list. Number 30, the right fielder, Ken Griffey. Griffey. Ken Griffey's September spurt for the batting title fell just short. Bill Madlock won on the final day. Among Griffey's key hits was a ninth inning game winner against Madlock's Cubs. Davey at second, Pete at first, a pitch. It swung on, a bouncing ball, sink of the center field. Here comes Concepcion, and this one belongs to the ref. Ken Griffey hit the first pitch that Buddy Schultz threw into center field for a single. And the Reds have pulled it out here in the bottom of the ninth inning by a final score of three to two. Griffey was a model of consistency with two 14 game hitting streaks. Included in his 336 average were some clutch hits in big games. Griffey with a fly ball. He hits it to deep right center field. It is this off the wall. Here's Geronimo scoring. Here comes Griffey to third. He is going to be safe sliding in a tie ball game. Number eight, the second baseman, Joe Morgan. Morgan. Morgan has had two doubles and four times up, and now Marshall straddles a pitching rubber. The Reds with a two-run ninth inning. Have Griffey at third with a winning run and two out. The pitch to Morgan. Swung on, base hit, and this one belongs to the Reds. Joe Morgan with a single to center field, and the Reds have scored three times in the ninth inning to defeat the Los Angeles Dodgers six to five, and we've got a dead heat for first place in the Western Division. Joe Morgan lived up to his statement that 1976 would be even better than his 1975 most valuable player season. He was spectacular, despite missing 21 games with injuries. Morgan shattered his own club records for second baseman with 27 homers and 111 RBIs. He was the first National League second sacker to surpass the century RBI figure since Jackie Robinson, and only the fifth in National League history. Morgan continued to command respect as a fearless clutch hitter. Joe Morgan at two balls and two strikes. He's to the plate with a pitch. Swung on, hit hard to right field. That ball is going to be gone. Joe Morgan with a line drive home run to right field off a 2-2 pitch from Don Sutton. And the Reds go out in front 3-0 here in the first inning. Little Joe passed the 500 mark in career steals and moved into fifth place on the all-time National League list. Number five, the catcher, Johnny Bench. Bench. For Johnny Bench, pride in the regular season came from handling three rookie pitchers who totaled 30 wins. He blasted seven homers by June. The Reds a leader, 2 to nothing. Bottom of the fifth. Two down, Joe Morgan at first base, Johnny Bench at the plate. Here's a 2-1 delivery with Morgan going, there it goes, long belt, left field, Bender at the wall, home run! Johnny Bench, his second four-fly belt of the game, the Reds move out in front, 4-0. 
A bench milestone, his 250th circuit low, was achieved on July 30th against San Diego. Here's a drive, deep left field, that could be, and is the 250th home run of Johnny Bench's career. That went up into the green seats in left field, number 10 of the year for Bench and number 250 in his big league career as they come to their feet with a standing ovation for Johnny Bench as he sends the Reds out in front one to nothing. Bench became the Reds' third best run producer of all time. And he put the team's pride above his own by asking to be dropped to sixth in the batting order so George Foster could bat fourth. Number 15, the left field, George Foster. Foster. Muscular George Foster paced the major leagues with 121 RBIs. His black hickory stick waved his 29th homer out of Atlanta Stadium in early September. The pitch on the way and swung on hit well, and that one is number 29 for George Foster. He had a fine drive out of here to left field. Number 29 for George and 114 RBIs, and the Reds lead it 6-4. to four. George dealt a blow to the Pirates in early July. Foster to play. Here's the first pitch to George. Four on, line drive, left field. Left field, out there. Just can't hand the ball, and we win it. How about that one, and this one belongs to the Reds. Oh, 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 unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Foster, the first pitch delivered by Rick Langford in a hard line drive to left field, and just charging the ball. Bobbled it, and no doubt about Griffey scoring for the Reds. Foster's average was 343 in early July, and he revived talk of the Triple Crown. He was the league's most valuable in a poll of players. Number 24, the first baseman, Tony Perez. Perez. Tony Perez boomed out 15 RBIs in his last 15 games to reach 91, his 10th year with 90 or more. He ruined the game for the Cardinals' Al Roboski in June. With the tying runs on and nobody out, Griffey second, Davey first, the strike one pitch. Swung on and hit into deep center field. Way back, it is going to be, this one belongs to the Reds. Tony Perez has hit a home run to dead center field, and the Reds have done it again. As Perez hit one over the 404 marker in straightaway center field, and Cincinnati has pulled it Perez made the most of his 139 games. Number 13, the shortstop, Dave Concepcion. Concepcion. Dave Concepcion led the Reds in game-winning RBIs with 15. One was a 10th inning single in mid-July against Montreal. The stretch, the pitch, swung on and bounced into left field. We won. Bill Plummer scores to third base, and the Reds win it by a score of four to three. And a big victory, boy, a tough one, but we got it. Ten innings are fifth victory in extra innings. Concepcion stroked five hits in one game. He drove in 69 runs and swiped 21 bases. Number 20, Cesar Geronimo. Cesar Geronimo vaulted into the ranks of 300 hitters in 1976. And as always, he roamed the outfield with his antelope strides and flypaper gloves. He hit a long ball in May. Swung on, fly ball, well hit, back in the right field. It is going to be gone for a home run. Well, that's two home runs in the inning. That's the first of the year for the Toronto Ball as he makes a grand tour. Those were the Reds' eight regulars, but they were in the same starting lineup just 49 times. 